in today's session of operating system we'll be moving on to the next topic which is nothing but deadlock so here in this session we'll see what is a deadlock and what is a deadlock characterization means now uh, when you go for multi programming as we all know you have n number of process and you have a limited number of resources so if a process wants to execute it requires a resource when i say a resource resource can be a file it can be a cpu i mean to say it can be any of your software and the hardware things which are required for performing an operation so if you have limited number of resources two or more process may compete for the same resource so if you just see this particular scenario process 1 is waiting for resource 2 i have two resources and resource 1 is assigned to process 1 similarly process 2 is assigned resource 2 and it is waiting for resource 1 so in this case if process 1 wants to complete the execution it wants r1 and r2 similarly if process 2 wants to complete the execution it requires uh, r1 and r2 but here r1 one particular process is using one resource and it is waiting for the other and p2 is having one resource and waiting for the other so in this particular case none of them can continue forward for their execution so this leads to a deadlock so deadlock is a situation where you have a set of process which are blocked why it they are blocked because they are holding a resource and waiting for the other resource which is been acquired for some other process uh, we'll see a normal example here assuming that person 1 and person 2 here are nothing but process 1 and process 2 and coming to the resource printer is one particular resource and paper is other resource now person wants to take a wants to perform a job what is the job he wants to take a print out so when a process uh, this particular process 1 or person 1 if he wants to take a print out he requires two resource one is your printer the other is your paper so here paper is been present with person p2 and printer is with person p1 so person p1 is waiting for the paper whereas person 2 is waiting for the printer so each one of them are having a resource and waiting for the other resource where both of them cannot continue their execution why because one is waiting for the other and it is blocking both the persons are been blocked we go for the other example as you can see these four ways are nothing but your resources right and these are your process so if this particular process wants to use the resource there is a block here so this particular thing in a real time example can also called as a deadlock because four of the cards any one of them cannot move further until one of them makes a move out now the basic thing which we need to do in this see in this deadlock is nothing but a system model so when i been saying that you have a process and you have a resource we have to follow a strategy the strategy here is nothing but first you go for a process has to request for a resource and if the resource is available the resource will be immediately given to that particular process or otherwise this process is made to wait until the resource is available assume the resource is very much available so the process can use the resource as well as release the same resource so you we have to be very much clear in system model that we request a resource use the resource as well as release the resource once your job is done we have been telling that we uh, you understood now a deadlock deadlock is nothing but permanent blocking of the process where none of them can continue with their execution so here we deal with deadlock characterization so in deadlock characterization we will be dealing with two topics one is related to your necessary condition what are the conditions for a deadlock to occur and we even go for seeing a resource allocation graph so we first concentrate on the necessary conditions for deadlock so these four are nothing but your necessary conditions and if you want a deadlock to occur all of them are to be simultaneously present so if they are simultaneously present in a particular situation you say the process leads to a deadlock so the first one is nothing but mutual exclusion as we been seeing in process synchronization what do you mean by mutual exclusion if one particular process using is using a resource the other particular process is not allowed to use the resource at the same time so when you have a mutual exclusion it means that there is a deadlock hold and wait so when you go for hold and wait one process will hold a resource assume r1 and 
it will wait for a resource R2 which is held up by some other process. So here it is holding R1 and waiting for R2. So if you have this particular situation also, we call it, we will get a deadlock. No preemption. No preemption in the case we have been seeing in scheduling that we have two types of scheduling, preemptive and non-preemptive. Preemptive in the sense, so once a resource has been allocated to a particular process, you can take it at any time. Whereas non-preemptive in the sense, once a resource has been allocated to the process, it is completely used by that particular process. So when a resource has been given to a process and if you are not taking it out forcibly till its completion, you call it as no preemption. So if there is a no preemption, there is a deadlock. And circular weight. Coming to your circular weight, circular weight here is nothing but P1 will be waiting for a resource R1, which is being held by P2. And P2 will in turn wait for a resource R2, which is in, uh, held by P3. P3 will be waiting for a resource R3, which is there with P1. So when you go for this particular situation, again, you are coming back to, you are started with process one, again, coming back to the same process. This we call it as a circular weight. So if all these conditions are present, then you say that there is a deadlock. So these four conditions, we call it as necessary conditions for deadlock. Now, in deadlock characterization, the next topic we'll be dealing here is it's a allocation graph. So as we know, graph is nothing but collection of vertices, comma, edges. So when you want to represent a graph here, first we'll deal with vertices. So we have two types of vertices here. One is your process, the other is your resource. Process is being indicated by a circle and you mention the process number or the name of the process, whereas the resource is being represented by a rectangle. And when you go for your resource vertices, you have a single instance or a multiple instance. Single or multiple instance is nothing but, for example, I have a resource which is related to a printer. Whether it is a black and white printer or a color printer, we they too come under your printer category, right? So this we call it as two instances. One is color, the other is black and white. So these, so printer is a resource and the type of it you call them as the instances. Now, for example, let us take an example of registers. So you have n number of registers. One can be a program counter. You can have an accumulator register. You have an MAR, memory address registers. So all these comes under a category registers. So registers is a resource name and how many instances of the resources are there? Three because we have three types of registers. Whereas when I go for a CPU to a system, it is only one because we have only one particular processor. So when you want to represent this resource, uh, resource vertices, it is in a rectangle. Single instance will be represented by a single dot here. Whereas when you have a multiple instance of the resources, we represent using the same rectangle, but three dots indicating that you have three instances of the resource same. So this can be an example of registers. This can be an example of a CPU. So this is related to your vertices. So and once you have decided what are the vertices, you need to even have the edges, right? You have to connect your what are the vertices here process and the resource. So there should be a connection between the process and the resource. So if you have an edge coming from a resource to a process, it indicates that this is an assignment edge, assignment edge indicating that this resource is being given to this process. When you have an edge or an arrow pointing to a resource and the tail end is pointing to a process, this you call it as a request edge indicating that your process, this particular process is making a request for this particular resource. Now, We'll see a resource allocation graph and why we are dealing with resource allocation graph. For example, you want to know whether there is a deadlock or not. So after you construct the resource allocation graph, if you have a cycle, you say that there is a deadlock. If you don't have a cycle, you say there is no deadlock. So we'll first check on, on single instance. So when you go for single instance, as you can see, you have only one particular resource. So here I'll, we go for only single dots here. So this is an example of a resource allocation graph. So we'll take the first example. This is the first example. So when you just see this graph, do you have any cycle here? No. So it indicates that since there is no cycle, we are dealing with single instance. So in single instant, if there is no cycle, then there is no deadlock. So you will not have any deadlock also. Now, 
in the same single instance just concentrate on this particular graph we'll start with p1 p1 is waiting for r1 r1 is held up with p2 P2 is waiting for R3, R3 is held up with P3, P3 is waiting for R2 and again you are coming back. So this is a cycle here. So since you have a cycle, so since you have a cycle, we say that there is a deadlock. So in single instance of resource allocation graph, no cycle means no deadlock. If you have a cycle compulsory, there is a deadlock. Now we'll move on to the next instance where you have multiple instances. So when you see this multiple instance of resource allocation graph, we'll just concentrate on this particular graph. See here, you have two cycles here. We'll concentrate P1 to R1, R1 to P2, Pt to R3, R3 to P3, P3 to R2 and R2 to R1. So if you just see this particular graph, P1 to R1 means P1 is requesting for resource R1. R1 is held up by P2 because this is an assignment. P2 is requesting for R3. R3 is held up with P3. P3 is requesting for an instance of R2. But among those two instances, one is given to P2, the other is given to P3. So when you see this particular case, until P1 or P2, any one of them releases one of the R2, it, it can be given to P3. So, but when you see this particular cycle as of now, none of them can continue their execution because one is waiting for the other resource to be held so here when you go for multiple instance you have a cycle and one is waiting for the other and you have you this leads to a deadlock now we'll go for the second example now just you see concentrate on this p1 to p2 p2 to p3 p3 to r2 r2 to p1 now when you go for this particular cycle no doubt you have a cycle in the multiple instance graph but when you see this particular case, P3 is waiting for per one particular instance of R2. One is been with P1 and other resources with P4. But P4 is not waiting for any other resource, right? So after the completion of this particular process, it just releases R2. So R2 can be given to P3 and P3 can continue the execution. Similarly, it releases R1 which can be given to P1. So it is not indefinite blocking, right? So once it's completion, you have some, there is some waiting done but it is not complete blocking of all the process. So here in multiple instance, even though you have a cycle here, it is not leading to a deadlock. In summary, what I want to convey is, uh, if you have a cycle and if it is a single instance, compulsory it leads to a deadlock. But if you have a cycle and this is a case of a multiple instance, you say that it may or may not lead to a deadlock, may or may not lead to a deadlock. So here in single instance, the presence of a cycle is both a necessary and a sufficient condition. Whereas in multiple instance, it is only a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition. Now, uh, in the previous scheduling algorithm, we you have might have heard about a word starvation. What is starvation? You are making a process to wait for another process which is having a resource. So you now we have seen a deadlock. So what is the difference between a deadlock and a starvation? Here in a deadlock, all the process will be waiting and no process will continue the execution. Whereas here, it is nothing but a long waiting. It is not indefinite waiting. You wait for some amount of time because higher priority process will make a lower priority process to execute. So here all the process will be waiting whereas here only the lower priority process will wait. And here none of them can continue the execution whereas here higher priority can continue the execution. Here the total resources are blocked and here the resources are utilized only by the higher priority process. And you, as we have seen, mutual exclusion, hold and wait and circular wait are the necessary conditions, whereas here priorities will lead to starvation. This can be prevented by preventing any of one of the condition and this can be prevented by using an aging technique where you increase the priority of the process. So in this today's session, we have covered what is a deadlock and what are the different characterization of a deadlock where we have seen the necessary conditions for the deadlock and the resource allocation graph and differences between deadlock and starvation. In the next session, we'll see how to go for enabling the various methods to overcome that particular deadlock.